Um, I absolutely loved it tonight. I thought it was wonderful. Um, I feel like I'm just... Um, sorry, I feel like I'm just repeating myself because every time I come and see a Jamie Lloyd show, it sounds really disingenuous, but it's just all, he's just amazing. Uh, the, uh, the design of it, uh, the play itself, uh, the cast, everybody, uh, McAvoy is just wonderful as ever. Um, I don't know, really know how he does it, but really, the consistency of Jamie Lloyd's work is quite incredible. It, it had an amazing intensity about it, just, and restraint, despite being a part which you could really go wild with. There were echoes of, uh, just that notwithstanding, there were echoes of Jim Carrey, there were echoes of um, the late Rick Mayle, but it was very much um, James's performance, so he made it his own very much so, um, whilst, whilst there were echoes of those those types of actors. Um, I mean, I've literally, I'm literally just out 10 minutes ago, so it's still processing, but uh, it really is quite an amazing performance. Obviously, I saw him do Macbeth um, with Jamie uh, a year or two ago, and um, James brings an amazing intensity, even in a black comedy like that. Even when he's being funny, there's a real focus and energy about his performance is great really really brilliant brilliant not not just um Sutra Gilmore who's the designer who works with Jamie on, on pretty much 99% of his shows uh, she manages to uh, visually transform the place but just the um, just the type of the type of shows that Jamie chooses creates a whole different atmosphere because it attracts a different audience as well. It just creates a whole different atmosphere over and over again. Uh, and it really is the place to work. If you're an actor, it really is like the place to be. And it's just, it's just fantastic. I mean, I've done it, it's great. Um, so, I, you know, it's a real honor to have done that. But um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's I, I recommend going or if you're an actor, trying to be in it yeah I'm actually um, I'm writing a play myself for myself because that's how narcissistic I am and uh, I'm shooting a movie uh, in a couple of weeks and then some TV stuff um, as well so yeah after that yeah I read it um, when I first knew that Jamie was going to do it, and I thought, how on earth is this stageable? How, how can the kind of the satire of this, um, how, how can it be pertinent? And it's come out into this incredibly funny, and in places like really creepy evening that hits you. You know, we're coming up to a general election and it punches you square in the stomach. It's brilliant. It's inventive. It's the performances are extraordinary. I'm I'm just I'm just terribly proud and excited to have been invited to it and to be able to kind of watch the Trafalgar continue its extraordinary work. I think actually without Jamie this is something this is a text that could have been a sort of an archive piece that might have been done here and now. I think that suddenly it's been grasped by the by the scruff of its neck, but it's an extraordinary text. It's incredibly pertinent, but it's very funny. And I think it's timeless. I, th I think that it's just lovely that it's been picked up now. And so everyone goes, oh, oh, and this makes that, that, that. I mean, its themes are, are, are just about kind of, you know, uh, the disproportionate wealth between the poor and the rich, the way that everyone kind of behaves. And I think that that's kind of timeless. I've said the word timeless twice. That's how much I feel about the word timeless and the timeless nature of the piece. I, I was aware of him through film, of course, and I first came, the first thing I saw him do on stage was when we were doing Richard III and he came to do a, um, a sort of a workshop in the afternoon, an open workshop where he did the Cassius speech. Um, do I mean Cassius? I think I do. No, Mark Antony, I come to Barry Caesar, not, uh, not to praise him. And there was this moment where I was, I was sitting there, it was before a show, I was tired and I was completely blown away. He's got those eyes, he's got this presence which is electric and he holds it together. He completely holds it together. What he does on screen is magnificent but he's got this kind of raw 
electricity, like this god of electricity energy that hits audience when he's on stage. He's completely and utterly, un, un, you can't take your eyes off him. He gets these really good companies that work together, terrific people, terrific actors, is a really lovely work ethic. The building's a bit strange, but you're told that from the beginning, and that's part of the joy of it. You come in, everyone's brilliant, and he chooses it's really fantastic plays. It's got a different energy to lots of other work that, that we've done, I think, hasn't it? Absolutely. You know, because of his devotion to the work, and he just, you know, you're, you're a company right away, and he lets you be as bold as he wants you to be, you know, and that's just wonderful. He wants you to be as bold as you possibly can. Exactly, yeah. he does, he does. And people respond, you know, you can start tonight. It's wonderful performances. What did you make of the production, and I guess particularly the magnificent James McAvoy? I thought he was um, very, very spectacularly good, and I was really pleased to see the play. I, I saw the film years ago. I think, you know, Peter Barnes, there was an incredible mind, and it's a great piece of English theatre. And I'm and wild and wacky and full of fury and poetry. It's great. It's kind of strange that it, this is the first time it's been revived. I know, yeah, I know. Well, the people don't know really... what to make of these things, you know. No, I guess not. But it's so relevant as well. That's the thing. Yeah. You know, we're talking about the 1% and all that. It's exactly what we're talking yeah. about now. It was fabulous. And James McAvoy's performance was an absolute tour de force. Yeah. And what are you both moving on to? Where are we going to be seeing you next? I'm working at the National at the moment. Uh, and I don't know what Mac you mean. <laughs> I think I'm going to be doing something called, um, what's it called? It's called Chewing Gum by a very, very clever young woman, but I'm not telling you any more about it. <laughs> I've got to say I was absolutely knocked out by it. Uh, I didn't really know anything about the play. Uh, it was amazing to see James McAvoy on stage again. I saw him in Three Days of Rain before uh, he's a good mate of mine and honestly he just gave an absolute spellbinding performance his comic timing uh, the tragedy brought to the role um, and the whole ensemble just uh, it was a fantastic night out at the theatre I just think he you know he's an actor that you can't really take your eyes off of him he's got a, a, a true I know it sounds a bit cliche but he has a sort of magnetic quality um, both on stage and on screen as well. And I think, you know, with the stuff that he's doing in the theatre recently, you know, it's just as good as and strong as his screen work as well. So, um, yeah, listen, I was really, really proud of him. I thought he just gave a, a, a brilliant, brilliant performance. I've got a couple of films coming out, one of which is with James Frankenstein, um, the remake of Dad's Army I've completed just before Christmas, and then in... Uh, the summer I'll be at the National Theatre in Patrick Marber's new play, The Red Lion, and I've never worked there before, so I'm, uh, yeah, thrilled to be working there for the first time. You mentioned their dad's army. I think fans of all generations are so excited to see that back. Where do you fit into that, and what can we expect overall from the big screen reboot? Well, surprisingly, I play Joe Walker, the Spiv. So, um... I had to grow my moustache and uh, sell nylons and various black market material. But uh, listen, look, they turned around and said the cast, it was Gam Michael Gammon and Toby Jones and Bill Nighy. And uh, I had the best five, six weeks shoot. Uh, we didn't stop laughing from start to finish. So the script's really great. It's a brilliant contained story. And um, yeah, everyone has such love for the, for the original. Um, um, everyone that made it are massive fans of the show, so um, hopefully our remake will do it justice. I think it'll be good, good for everyone. You mentioned Frankenstein, obviously working with James. Where do, where do you fit into that? Uh, I quite. Uh, I'm at the beginning of the movie. I play a sort of uh, rather vicious uh, ringmaster. There's a huge set piece in a circus at the beginning, so. Um, yeah, had a few scenes with James, so I can't get rid of him, can I, on film? Um, no, long may it continue. He's a great person to work with.